Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to be here with you. It is a great day to be alive. Ooh, I cannot wait for you to hear today's show. So uh, before we get to that, if you're at this uh, beautiful, amazing podcast, <laughs> I say with all humility, if you get to this podcast and you are here for the first time, welcome. We're so glad you're here. And the podcast isn't great because of me. It's great because we get real here and talk about soul nourishing topics, you know, and if you've struggled with food and weight for any length of time, it's because you're hungry for something that food's not giving you, right? So here, you know, my hope is that your soul will be nourished and you'll be encouraged and inspired by the stories you hear here and the topics that are covered, which are not about, you know, weight loss per se, but really about the underlying causes that, that contribute to losing weight without knocking your head against the wall, trying to control your weight or calories or diets or anything like that. Okay. Sound good. Yay. Um, also we, uh, like to continue the conversation in a special Facebook group that's for emotional eaters. It's called the secret sauce to end emotional eating. So definitely uh, check us out there. Go to Facebook and type in the secret sauce to end emotional eating. Ask to join. We're happy to have you. Um, I'm posting every day. Uh, people are talking in there, supporting each other. Um, I do special interviews in there and you get, you get the first, you're the first to know when we got some cool stuff going on. So please join us in the secret sauce group. Okay. So this episode is part of a podcast series called Snapshots of Freedom from Emotional Eating. This is an eight episode series that will give you a short but intimate peek into the minds and hearts of courageous people that have stepped off the diet track and are now on a journey to heal the underlying causes of their emotional eating. I'm hoping that you'll be inspired by this informal talk with one of my many awesome Heal Your Hunger clients. And stick around till the end because in each episode, I share Trisha's take, providing a summary as well as valuable tips that you can use to heal your own relationship with food. Enjoy the show. Welcome, Hannah. So excited to have you here. Hi, it's great to be here. Yeah, this is great. I appreciate your taking the time, especially because you're such a busy mom, <laughs> uh, mom of five uh, small children. So thank you so much for being here. It's been such an incredible pleasure to have you in the Heal Your Hunger family, you know, and really just applying yourself to everything we have to offer. So thanks for that. It's, it's been amazing to watch you. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm so thankful I've gotten to have this journey. So yeah. Thank you for making it available for us. Oh, so my pleasure. Um, so I think a great place to start um, really is sort of really what got you to that breaking point of being like, mm -hmm. I have to do something. Yeah, I think I, th I think really having kids started the whole thing. So I have two biological children that are three years apart, three and a half years apart. And then I have three adopted children. And so I feel like the experience of birthing children and adopting children it really has really pushed me. And you adopted um, the three at, at the same time, right? Yeah. They're three sisters. Okay. Um, so they all moved in at the same time about three years ago. And so I think I had some trauma and abuse in my past that I felt like I always carried with me. And so I was doing a lot of, I was doing all the things the doctors told me to do. I was going to counseling, I was taking medicine. Um, and it just, and I would get to like a place where things maybe felt a little better, but then with the next trial, it was just like all those tools went out the window. And uh, so then when all five of my kids were home over COVID doing remote learning, like, I just, that's what pushed me. Like, that was like, I can't do this anymore. This, I'm not happy. This is not a good way to live. These tools that I'm using don't seem to be the answer. So I listened to a bunch of podcasts and 
eventually I found, and they were all around like health and wellness. And eventually I found a podcast where they were interviewing you. And I remember I was like driving to school to pick up uh, school lunches. Like, I think it was May. And uh, it was like, all of a sudden, like all of these issues that I had never known were emotional eating. I didn't even know what emotional eating was. It was like, oh my goodness, it's me. Like, mm. like all these things fit together. And so then I got like obsessed or hungry really <laughs> to like figure out what this thing was and to like address it. And like, just to hear that it wasn't like this experience other people had gone through and it wasn't just me was like that in itself was very like healing and affirming. I think I read your book in like three days. I read it about as fast as I could, (laughs) like just trying to absorb all of it. And then I booked a meeting with you and I think talking to you, I was like, I just have to do this. Like, so I did. (laughs) And here I am two years later, almost. Wow. What a story. That's so great. And um, yeah, I'm glad you found us. And, Mm -hmm. and so you were doing, I mean, the the thing about you uh, that has not changed is that you, you know, you're like a dog with a bone and you want to, you, you really are tenacious when it comes to working on yourself and, Mm -hmm. and having personal growth. And so I think you, you caught that wave really quickly, you know, and, and realized, Hey, this is a deeper journey. So what was that pivot like for you to realize that you had some things you could actually do that? And then you were getting benefit from. Mm, I think it was like, I think a lot of it is I just have trusted the process, like the things that you say and the issues that you address just ring true in my heart. And so when that happens, it's, it's easier for me to follow. And so like with the self-care, there was a, there was like a part of me that wanted to know, like I could have this time for myself and I could have this time to take care of myself and everyone else would be fine. And then I think I started to realize like, not only is everybody else fine, but we're doing better because we're having breaks. And we're mm. creating space for each other. So I think there, there were some moments where it was like, I just have to sit here and trust that this works, especially around meals. Like I had to sit there and trust, like, I don't need this right now, or I'll be fine afterwards. And those are, those are hard to um, walk through. But sometimes if you just wait, like the answer comes. And, and mm. I think now I've, I've found so many other ways to feed myself, like through breathing or yoga or walking or meditation. Like it just, I don't see eating as the only way to fill all of the needs that I have. Mm. I love that. So beautiful. Um, so let's dig in. So obviously, I mean, you took to the idea of self-care being an integral part, which it is the the heal your hunger way has very little to do with the food, you know, beyond free meal magic and is really about the self-care so that we can address the stress, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, feed your soul, you know, at a deeper level, because it's not food you're really hungry for. So, um, and because you're this mom who, who ostensibly doesn't have time for these things, you know, for self-care. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I mean, it's overwhelming to have kids, let alone five kids, you know? And so, um, how do you, let's talk a little bit about how you do that and how the family takes to it and how it's changed your family. Uh, it was pretty, it was pretty funny because I watched it on my girls last night, like playing and they were like meditating. <laughs> so, wow. Like, it's just something that like all of our family knows about now. Uh, I think some of it is that because I grew up like in the church experience, the idea of taking a quiet time was part of my life. So that that just kind of grew. And so a lot of times it happens in the morning. A lot of times it happens like 
all my kids still have quiet time in the afternoon, like when they would have nap time when they were little. So like there's that hour, but, um, so I, I guess that's how it started. And, but then it's a lot of just like saying no and trusting that your kids are going to be fine if you're not like constantly watching them. And oftentimes I feel like they do better if you're not micromanaging them. Um, and there, there has to be like a level of presence, right? Right. But it's also trusting that if I take this time away, if I take this 20 minutes or an hour or whatever it is, like the rest of the family is going to be okay. We're going to cope and we're going to find a way. And my husband is very supportive. So if I tell him I need a break, he's like, sure, no problem. Like I completely trust him when it comes to doing things with the kids. So he doesn't do things the way I do them, but he's great. So I love that. Well, I just want to comment on that because oftentimes it's hard for us to let go of control. Like we don't want the burden, but at the same time, we don't yep. want other people to do it. Not how we would do it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and that's a little conflict. So congratulations yeah. on letting go of having it your way and letting him, you know, trusting him. Yeah, no. And I think it's, it's trusting to that higher power that like, that God is going to work everything out for the good of your family of, in your life. And, you know, you taking your hands off gives, gives things a chance to just breathe and be, and maybe think of things in a new way. So I love no. that. So beautiful. And your girls were playing and yes. their, their play was meditation. That is pretty, that's pretty yeah, that so cute. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. And yeah. so, um, Talk to us about your relationship with food and how that's different. I feel like it, it evolves all the time. And I feel like it, it's really, it's a process, but it's, I feel like I'm in a really good place where it's something that like nourishes my body, but it's not something that I'm constantly like obsessed over. So it was like so much time and thought and energy went into what I ate or didn't eat before the program. And like, it felt like this really complicated puzzle to figure out. And anytime I was like burnt out or just was like, I'm done, I'm going to let it go. Like I would gain weight. And so, mm. and then when I put all this attention to it, I would only lose like 10 pounds. So that didn't feel uh, good either. And so it was like, incorporating the program and all the self-care and the, I really love the three meal magic, how you put boundaries around food for me. That was really huge. Um, I ended up losing like probably almost 50 pounds. I haven't weighed myself in a while, but like, wow. I mean, just without really, there wasn't really a lot of attention to what I was eating. It was about like, I think it's been a journey to find like how to be joyful or and, and experience like the feelings in life. Absolutely. So. Congratulations on the weight loss. That's incredible. Oh, it's yeah, incredible. It's and what a crazy. beautiful thing that it's just kind of happened, you know, right. as you were, as you were focusing on taking care of yourself. I just love that. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, can you, I think something that's really important to talk about, um, and might inspire a lot of people is your relationship with your husband, mm -hmm. because obviously our relationship with food impacts our intimate relationships a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Will you talk a little bit, a little about whatever you feel comfortable talking about? Sure. Um, he is always, he's always been really supportive of me. He came from a family where I think the mom just cooked a lot of whole foods anyways. So he loves like those whole foods. Like he loves vegetables and I did not grow up that way. Uh, so he's very supportive of me in this journey. And we kind of eat more similarly now, like where, but where we just enjoy food that we have. I think, I, I think the biggest thing that's changed is I'm just easier to be around and sillier. Um, like I feel like there's just a softness to our relationship that wasn't there before. And so 
I don't know. I, I feel like anytime we go through a trial as a couple or any kind of adventure, we grow closer together. But this was like, this experience I think has helped us become like best friends again. Um, we're, so I, I think he sees that I'm at peace and then that makes him more open with me and, and willing to help me when I need it. Sweet. So that's so sweet. And I love you're saying that it, the relationship is softer because I would venture that you're softer with yourself. Like you're more kind and compassionate towards yourself yeah. and that automatically transfers to other people. Mm-hmm. No, I think, I think so. And, um, just even like in the way that like I touch people or approach people, it's like, um, I think that's, what's changing when I interact with them. So, so beautiful. Yeah. And your kids can't not feel the benefit of that either. Right. Yeah. Super. Yeah. I love how you said you're more silly and I, and mm-hmm. I'm sure your kids feel that too. Mm-hmm. You know, can you talk a little bit about that, about the lightness that you feel? I think like when I do the self-care stuff, it kind of, it kind of, um, it it quietens, it quiets all the chatter and like all of the, like just noise in my head. And so then when I go and I do something with them, I'm just there present in the moment. And so like we went, we go roller skating a lot together, especially in the winter and like we're just playing. I'm roller skating with them, playing around. It's so funny because my one daughter, they're all, they're all better at roller skating, but my one daughter really struggled. And she kind of looked at me when I took her the first time, like, what have you done? <laughs> like, where <laughs> have you taken me? And then I went roller skating with her last Monday. And it was like, that girl was fast. I mean, wow. we were like playing around, zooming around. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like, she's such a better skater than I am now. Um, I took them out. We went to a movie and took them out to eat and we were just really silly. I don't know, just like teasing each other. And uh, like our family meals are really different. So like sometimes they're, they're tough, but like last night our meal together, we were just so silly. And it was like, you tell it was like, these are people who haven't been with each other all day. And we just have so much, so many things to share and talk about. And it was just very silly. That brings, yeah. It brings tears to my eyes. That's really incredible. Hannah. Yeah. So beautiful. Wow. You know, and congratulations for adopting your daughters and giving them this new home. And it sounds like they're really acclimating. Oh yeah. The first, so we, they moved in in December and that first Christmas, we spent Christmas Eve in like three different urgent cares because they were in, they were in foster care. We hadn't adopted them yet. And so that was so hard to like be with kids that you said were your, that, that you said were your children, but didn't quite feel like your children. You don't know them. You don't know how they are when they're sick. Um, so that was tough. And then this Christmas, we were sick again. But it was a completely different experience. Like I knew, okay, you're, you feel tired. You don't feel great. Why don't you go take a break? And, but then there were also times where we were just really calm and quiet and like playing together. We watched movies together. It was just easy, you know? And so it felt, I think to have that experience twice the way we did really showed me like how much we've grown and just become comfortable with each other. And like, um, I don't know, just how more natural it feels. So beautiful. Wow. It's incredible. And you didn't have to eat your way through that. No. Those trials. <laughs> it was great. Oh my gosh. There's so many fun. I think there was like this transition where it was like, I don't have food. Now what do I have? what am I going to do? And now it's like, Oh, now I know, like, now I'm going to go like play a game with my kids or now I'm going to go for a walk or now I'm going to go do this fun thing or go see it, you know, a play or something like, so 
That's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. It, it isn't incredible how much space it opens up in your life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, it's no longer all about food anymore. No. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So inspirational. Thank you for taking the time to share all this. I think it really is, you know, it, it gives people a, a wide lens view of what freedom from emotional eating looks like and all the different ways yeah. that we can be of service in the world, you know, mm-hmm. when, when we don't have this tunnel vision, you know, where everything is, how are we going to get food? How are we going to get rid right. of what the effects of food, you know, and everything that comes along with this. So congratulations on all the Thank freedom you. that you experience, all the work that you've done to get here. You know, it really is so beautiful. And it's such a pleasure having you be a part of the community. You add so much. Can you, speaking of which, can you speak a little bit about how that's like what that's done for you and helped you on your path? Oh yeah. Cause I think that's so huge. Like, especially because I joined the program right after and I joined the program in May of 2020. So COVID was really, we were still in lockdown then. Um, and so a lot of my support systems had gone away for one reason or another. And I feel like that the support system is for emotional eating, but it it's really for so many more, so many other things. And I think it's, I think it was such a gift that you had already had this online program developed before COVID started. Like you were already ahead of the game and kind of had some of these ground rules set up. And so I think the Facebook group is a very safe place. Like there are expectations of behavior and it's, and because of that, I feel like it's just a, we're just honest and we share and it's just gentle and soft and There's no, I don't feel any like harshness or criticism or negativity, which I think is easy, happens easily on social media sometimes. And I I don't know, the, the phone calls that we have on Sundays and like throughout the week, those are like some of the best hours of my life. Like there's just so much joy that comes out of those hearing about people who are just like me struggle with the same things I do and are just trying to find a way like we're all trying to find a way um and I think that is a really powerful thing in a time where lots of people are isolating you bet you bet oh my gosh I 100% I love them (laughs) I get I get totally reinvigorated every single time I spend time with you all on zoom So, well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much and bless you and bless your kiddos and your husband and all the support, you know, they've given you and all that you're able to give back to them on account of this journey that you're on. Yeah. Thanks. I, I'm so thankful for you for having this program in place. Thank you. you, Sweetheart. Great to be with you. Okay. Here's my take. Have you heard the saying, happy wife, happy life? Or perhaps this one, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. All right, it's cute, but it might actually also be true. You know, Hannah is a beautiful example of finally putting herself and her self-care needs first in her life. Now, I speak to women every day who feel like that's selfish. They think, how could I possibly put my self-care needs first? According to Motherly, which is an online resource for mothers of all different age kids, they did a 2021 state of motherhood survey, and they found that 93% of mothers reported feeling burned out. It was up seven points from the previous year. And 16% say they feel burned out all the time. Now, I do recognize that the pandemic probably really amped up those numbers because it was so hard having the kids at home. No break for parents. So uh, that's understandable. But here's another uh, little tidbit for you. According to a joint survey done by Healthy Woman and Working Mother magazines, 78% of moms report that they put off taking care of their own health because they're too busy 
looking after their loved ones. It's a common story. Women believe that self-care is somehow selfish and they pour their heart into their kids, into their spouse, sometimes to their parents as well. But then they're worn out, they're tired, um, you know, and of course, where does that end up if they're emotional eaters? It ends up with late night binges, snacking through the day, having erratic eating behaviors, and weight gain. So something's got to give. You know, I talk to moms all the time that feel bad about their food choices. They hate being a negative role model for their kids, but they don't know how to stop. And so I love the example that Hannah has given where when she takes time for herself, she's actually giving a gift to her family. Her kids not only get through it, they actually thrive. They learn how to entertain themselves. They learn how to play together, you know, and they're doing fine when she takes a time out. So it's a great example. And if you're somebody who's struggling with food and weight, but you feel this tension, like I can't take time for myself, I want you to think again. I want you to be reminded and inspired by Hannah's example of self-care. You know, because when you take time for yourself, you not, not only restore and get refreshed in your energy and your sleep and your perspective on life, but you're able to be more present with your kids. And so many emotional eaters feel like their obsession with food and weight takes them away from being present with their kids. And that was true for me. Anytime I was obsessed with food, I wasn't present. I wasn't present to the people around me. So the best thing you can do is start taking those naps or taking time for meditation in the morning or just a time out, going for a 10-minute walk, taking the kids out for a walk, um, asking a neighbor to watch the kids so you can do something for yourself and your spouse as well, getting su support from your spouse. When you do that, you're more present for your kids and certainly you're going to have an easier time around food because you're no longer stressed out and stress eating. But just remember, you're worth taking good care of. And self-care is not selfish. It's the best gift you could give to your family. If you are interested in having the same kind of experience Hannah is having, where you have more balance in your life, where your relationship with food is in a better place, I encourage you to go to our website and register for a complimentary emotional eating breakthrough session. You know, we're happy to talk with you and see if you might be a fit for the program that Hannah went through. Go to healyourhunger.com in order to do that. Thanks so much. I appreciate your being here today. Please share this episode with other moms who might need a little boost. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next show. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit healyourhunger.com.